and bam, we are live. Good afternoon, ladies, gentlemen, and all those in between. This is another episode of Rendezvous with Rico. Sorry for starting. Sorry for starting a couple minutes late there. Um, you know, still had to you know do a little prepping, get everything good to go. So now that we're good, welcome. Glad you've all stuck around this long, and I hope you're all looking forward to the, the remaining shows I have for the rest of the day. Uh, I'm your host, Rico, and I have with me today, Sam. Hello. Greetings. <laughs> Greetings to, all, to, to everyone. Yep, yep. So, same as always, y'all know I'm doing this to fundraise for the Neighborhood Revitalization Committee of my local Habitat for Humanity. Link's in the description below. And if you're going to donate, make sure you notate that it is for the Neighborhood Revitalization Committee. And if you can't use that link, you got my PayPal down there, which you send the money to me. I donate for you, send you receipts so you know that I donate your money appropriately. So, with all of that being said, that all of that being said, Sam, would you be so kind as to introduce yourself to the audience? Greetings, everyone. Uh, I'm Sam Hoadley Brill. I'm a PhD student in philosophy at the City University of New York Graduate Center in Brooklyn. I'm not located in Brooklyn at the moment, though. I'm back home in. Uh, Pasadena, California, my parents' house. And I'm interested in all sorts of things. Uh, the discourse. Um, uh, thank you, L. Ron Hubbard. <laughs> that's, that's, that's fantastic. Yeah, so uh, people might know me from a review of Cynical Theories, the book by uh, James Lindsay and Helen Pluckrose. That's sort of what established me as somewhat of an online presence on Twitter. Uh, and met a bunch of people through that on philosophy Twitter and adjacent areas of academia Twitter, as well as a lot of really cool people who are just sort of similarly, who have a similar mindset of approaching certain social problems and are broadly left wing um, in uh, when it comes to addressing political problems and, you know, uh, people who, who people who want working class solidarity and all that sort of stuff. Um, but really, I, I have interest in, in all sorts of sorts of social media phenomena and culture war stuff generally, and that's sort of what I find myself thinking about very often in both regular interests that I have and, and also like philosophically thinking about like the sort of questions about social epistemology and how information gets disseminated and who we trust and the sort of uh, who we give authority to and all, 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 all hosts of relevant questions. Hell yeah. Well, I can dig that. So I, can, I too share in that broader um, interest and that's why I'm doing this, what I'm doing here. You know, I think a good way to to promote a better discourse on these matters and uh, kind of uh, weed out, you know, and cut through a lot of bullshit is to kind of sit down and talk with people because fighting with people on Twitter is just not the way to do it. It's just, it's a cesspool and it does not, it is not a very, uh, uh, there's not a place for it can do having a productive conversation on any such matters at all, period. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it does tend to lend itself that way. I, I do find that with a person who has, you know, a lot of patience and is like explicit about their goodwill going into certain conversations, progress can be made, but generally that's the, that's the exception and not the rule. Yeah. Yeah. So with that being said, and that's, and that's why we're here, you were saying before, uh, before we started the show, about the um, about the discourse and whatnot, and which in the spaces you're observing, can you repeat all that, please? Uh, sure. I mean, so, I mean, this summer especially, I think Twitter has sort of uh, gone. The sort of culture wars have been ramped up, right? So, if we're gonna like, <laughs> if we're going to, if we're, <laughs> right, if if we're if we're going to characterize the two big sides of the culture war, right? As, as I've seen it referred to by uh, one of my friends and one of my favorite podcast hosts, uh, Aaron Rabinowitz, who hosts uh, Embrace the Void podcast. Um, I had him on here recently. He's good. He's oh, good great. Here. 
Yeah, yeah, great guy. And so, you know, he often casts things in terms of IDW versus SJW, right? Mm -hmm. And so this is like not even necessarily a right wing versus left wing thing. You have, uh, well, I, I, I don't know if you have any social justice warriors on the right, but you definitely have a lot of IDW types who are not on the right, right? Who might call themselves centrist or 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 are even on the left. Um, and in this general fight, this ongoing war, one of the main battles has been over this new uh, emergence, so say the IDW, of cancel culture. And, and cancel culture, right, I feel like has to some extent existed in all Long societies, all bullshit, right, in all right, societies, yeah, it's very, very sort of just a feature, yeah. right, right. But but given the emergence of social media, uh, it has taken n new shapes, and it has sort of be it, it's easier than ever for people to participate in cancel culture. Yeah. It's become and, effectively a kind of wild, a kind of free for all wild west, whereas before the other. The, the, whoever got to decide who got canceled or whatever was simply essentially those who had uh large platforms right you know, before the internet you know what i mean so if you didn't already have you weren't already a well-connected well-to-do fellow with a large platform you didn't really get a say in anything exactly and now it's still like that to an extent because the most influential players are still those people with the most amount of social capital but now everyone can participate and everyone can get the sort of endorphin release of yelling at a celebrity on Twitter that, you know, has misstepped in some way or another. But so, you know, without taking a stance on on cancel culture itself, um, one thing that I've recently noticed just in my personal experience is aspects of cancel culture mentality um in like entire pockets of twitter communities mm -hmm. where there are sort of groups of accounts who all follow one another and their their main activity on twitter seems to be sort of finding people who have um misstepped in the way they personally like to uh or in their sort of uh their sort of sin of choice whatever it is so, is there Criti someone's people are constantly on the hunt for someone to cancel okay? exactly like whatever, exactly for whatever perceived slight and where it's not even a hunt for cancellation it's just on the hunt for someone to dog basically to, to for dog someone file, to, to, to make a yeah. to make it you know to shit on you know what i mean it's it's right and there's a lot of people who've built their entire internet presence around that you know what i mean Yes. And they that's just, something that I hadn't seen in person yet. So, I mean, I, I had seen, I had seen documentation of it. Um, the, the main one I'm thinking of is specifically um, ContraPoints, Natalie Wynn, if you're familiar with her, her content. I am very familiar with them. And holy shit, that she is uh, someone who has dealt with all kinds of bullshit. She, yeah, she has been, so her, she has a, like a two hour video on cancellation, which is like, you know, like a, if you know Natalie, you know her her content is the the production value is incredibly high, right? She yeah. puts a lot of effort into all her videos. And so this is like a two hour, like hour and 40 minute, uh, basically like a sort of short documentary, like kind of like a like a motion picture type of thing where like yeah, you can, I've seen this you can set it aside and it, it's it's incredible. And the amount of the amount of just data, just how many different instances of this exact mentality that I'm trying to describe that it, you, you can't, you can't capture without really looking at the specific tweets and, and these yeah. sorts of, it, it's, it's incredible. Yeah, no, some people have definitely, they, it's almost like her, just her as an example, she has basically a hate fandom of people right. who are just, who comb through every last little fucking thing she says and has ever said and is looking for something to be mad at, and it is insane to me. And I'm just like, what is wrong with you people? Like, why are you like this? Why are y'all looking? These are people I would describe as just kind of perpetually angry or looking for something to be angry about, or someone to be angry about, big or small. And I'm just like, 
Jesus fucking Christ. Why? Yeah. It, 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 it's, it's often people who you can tell from their bio, right? They'll often have like their age in their bio. And, and these people are typically young. Like, you know, like these people yeah. will be 17, 18 years old. Um, you know, most likely still in high school. Yeah. And one of my just in sort of intuitive hypotheses is that, you know, these it's, it's part of a larger feature of the the alienation of our culture yeah. as, you know, life under this stage of capitalism with mm -hmm. also the expansion of social media, right? And so we're increasingly isolated. We're like more connected than ever, but we're also less connected than ever mm -hmm. socially. And people need to find some source of meaning in their lives. And, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the features of our culture have sort of come together in this confluence of influences that make, that leave a, lots of gaping holes of meaning in people's lives. And this is why people, this is why, you know, uh, young men, basically like young identity, straight men. Like there's, a, there's a crisis of identity, sense of purpose, and, you know, you said just, just sense of self-worth. And so they find themselves in these spaces online that incur, that just kind of, this becomes their identity of sorts it's a, or a right. purpose or something for them to do, to focus on. Uh, and it's, it's so hollow and, and just cruel. And it's, it's just, it's not good. But again, it's, yeah, it is due to, uh, not just the isolation that's come from the, uh, from this stage of capitalism, but again, also from the, uh, I would say again the destruction of any kind of i sense of identity that mm -hmm. people may have once had you know what i mean i i don't know i don't fucking know how things were 50 60 years ago but i know fucking now it's like dude there's this 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 crisis of identity and people looking right. for something something to feel a part of to feel connected with to feel like that gives them meaning and engaging in this in this these almost these kind of mob style witch hunts for anyone, anyone, any perceived slight is something to them to make them feel like they're a part of something, like they're doing something. And I'm like, no, that's incredibly misguided. Right. Yeah. And I think this is how it generally manifests with certain demographics are probably more. Well, actually, I, I don't, I don't even want to, want to make that assessment what i was going to say is that certain demographics just like based on like age and interests and like political orientation are more likely to engage in this sort of witch hunt group collective um yeah. this sort of forge an identity through the through through the group through the collective group. yeah um but i don't know if that's even true whether it's whether it's uh that some groups are more prone to that or that those are just the groups that I come across because I like am navigate adjacent spaces. Yeah. No, I, um, I, I, the reason I, I, as an example of that is the big issue of, because I think we all here, at least in America's case, definitely suffer from an identity crisis um, from white Americans to black Americans, you know, to, it all, it all really depends on where, where you fall in society. But in the way things are, our identity is effectively our jobs. You know, what is our, you know, our employment, our jobs. What is keep, that becomes all that we are for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's not much to define ourselves outside of that, save for like consumerism, uh, the type of materialism where your identity becomes the... Uh, the materials that you're consuming, the, right. the product, whatever it is, the video game, the franchise, or whatever the case may be, whatever is the thing that you do outside of just uh, outside of you know grinding to survive, um, it becomes your identity. Or those who don't necessarily grind to survive, but they don't really have an identity outside the product they consume, outside of being a fan of a thing, or whatever the case mm -hmm. may be. Mm -hmm. And so any perceived slight. Uh, uh, toward, towards that thing they see as an attack on themselves. You know, so I've seen this yes. in a lot of different like uh, fandoms of video games or certain uh, movies, TV shows, whatever the case. Yeah, right. 
where anyone who's who basically dares to critically assess those things is um, deemed a pariah and is dogpiled and uh, and some straight up assaulted. You know what I mean? Like the example of mm-hmm. Cyberpunk 2077 that came out, a reviewer had pointed out all she did was point out that they cyber and they do objectively have a thing that deliberately causes ep- epilepsies within the game. They have a certain thing that brings about the type of light patterns that specifically okay. is made to cause people epilepsies. And she pointed that out and like, hey, that's kind of not good. And motherfuckers came at her literally sick because she's she's epileptic. She said, why the that's why she thought that was bad. Motherfuckers started dogpiling her and started sending her things to cause epileptic seizures. Oh on no. Purpose. You know what I mean? So Jesus. And you have to wonder, I was like, are you guys seriously doing this over a fucking video game? Someone's criticizing you rightfully pointing out an objective fact about a video game and critically assessing, hey, that's not good because of people like me with epilepsy will, you know, could get hurt and die from this. And they take that as an attack on the, an attack on their game, thus an attack on them. So then they literally try to kill this person. You know what I mean? And in, a polit- in the realm of politics, the same way, the people who identify with their political label so strongly that anyone who dares to criticize or attack that fucking thing, well, now we, we, we got to kill them. We got to try to ruin their lives. We got to kill them. We got we, we to gotta, uh, come at them with everything that we can. And it's insane to me, but I think it is because of the lack of identi- any identity and that, and that, and that desire and sense of that desire for uh, a place to belong, that energy, unfortunately, is going in all the wrong places, I would say. Mm-hmm. And being kind of kind of in a feedback loop to feed that negative, uh, the, the kind of negative identity, I would say, if I, if I, if I had to I describe that behavior. It seems to me that I, I like the way that you phrased the last the last bit about the sort of um, th- there's this sort of disembodied anger or frustration yeah. that people have. And I think generally they're not. It, it, it sort of in the early stages of that emotion that it's not clear where it's coming from. There's just yeah. sort of just, just, just a vague feeling of frustration or dissatisfaction. And I think it's likely that a lot of that comes from the sort of alienation that I was talking about mm-hmm. that comes from multiple sources. And that emotion, that anger can be productive, it can but be. it has to be channeled through the right, the right channels, right? You, yeah. it has to be, it has to, you have to rationally reflect upon it. You have to think, where is this coming from? You have to organize, but these are sort of like these, these, these outrage, uh, loops, these sort of collectives that will mobilize for whatever reason and gratify anyone's wish to, you know, sort of manifest righteousness to be on, yeah. on the right side that is a sort of like the fast food version of doing politics. Yeah. Cause I'm sure the people who are doing this entirely believe that what they're doing is righteous as righteous mm-hmm. anger. It is just in what they're doing because they're taking down someone that's trying to uh, attack them to right. deny them the, th- the, the, that which they feel entitled to uh, you know, that, which is theirs or again, or their, again, their, their identity, the thing, that they strongly care about. And because again, that righteous anger yeah, can be pointed in the right direction. Like if we're talking, if you wanted to uh, harass the living fuck out of politicians that are whose uh, policy policies that they are advocating for and pushing and facilitating are that are actually causing a whole lot of fucking harm to people like mm-hmm. Mitch McConnell, hell yeah, right. by all yeah. means. You know, like raise hell against that guy. But that energy is not being channeled in such a way. Obviously, we all have our own definitions of justice and just actions. And we can, as I say, you and I can see that that energy is not being channeled towards just actions. Instead, it's being used for all the wrong reasons. And it's because people's identity identify strongly with, uh, again, what we define as all the wrong things. Because I'm like, if you, I'm like, if you want to get angry at something, be angry at Mitch McConnell, not some motherfucker right. who's just pointing out what's wrong with a video game. Like, God damn. Like, if you want you want to be angry, you want to fucking go call, try to force something to change, fo- use all the energy on that guy, not, not mm-hmm. somebody who just criticized your video game. Right. 
So, now yeah. it's it's interesting because now I'm thinking like I'm thinking about you know so we're having this conversation here and this is obviously yeah. a lot more of a productive outlet and a more measured response to these kinds of things but this this um it's I see a lot of people on Twitter you know I, a lot of brains get broken on Twitter where oh, yeah. these people will become caricatures of the very thing they're criticizing. So <laughs> this is this is what I think, uh, what I sort of diagnosed in the book review of uh, uh, Cynical Theories by Helen Pluckrose and James Lindsay. And I'm always trying to be very wary of navigating the line between criticizing the things that I think are worth criticizing and becoming the sort of just like outrage machine because I can sometimes detect like in my brain, like that sort of like primitive, um, like just not necessarily primitive, but that instinctive anger response and be on Twitter in a heated argument and feel myself like getting possessed sort of like by the yeah. ideology, right? And so I guess from your experience, how, or or just in your opinion how do you how do you see the sort of landscape of of the sort of like woke people who might be anti a bunch of things and get outraged and then the anti woke people and then the anti anti woke people right like <laughs> there's like these what camps see, of like what i see is a bunch of feedback loops uh, people in respective circles that when they see their behavior, if they say even their bad behavior being reinforced by a kind of uh, a love bombing, a kind of positive feedback loop, it only makes they, they effectively start becoming brain poisoned or dumber as a result and lose their ability to critically assess anything because their worst fucking thoughts are being encouraged. You know what I mean? You look at James Lindsay as a prime example of someone who has become basically uh, un incompre incomprehensible at this point. Mm -hmm. Like he, he, the things he says, the things he tweets out now are barely functional, barely coherent sentences of that's so mired in the fucking nonce, in the jargon that he built that his he entire came brand up with. on, yeah. that he came up with, that now he's incomprehensible to even someone like me or you, or, uh, who's, who actually understands where, where, where this shit he's saying is coming from. But it's like, mm -hmm. God, it's like, dude, what are you even saying anymore? You know what I mean? So, and you see that. I see that, I would say the James Lindsay effect. I would say it's actually a great way, a great a name for that. Essentially, yeah. is, uh, cause it's really catchy, the James Lindsay effect. I like that. It, it sounds, yeah, it rolls off the tongue. Yeah. It rolls off the tongue, the James Lindsay effect, where you start off at championing a thing and you, instead of, uh, uh, engaging honestly with your critics, all you're listening to is all the people the, all you listen to is the people celebrating the dumb thing that you said. And so you increasingly say dumber things that kind of build off that dumb thing. And now it's just, again, your audience, they, they all agree. They love it. But you, you've lost your ability to critically think about anything now. You've, you've stopped doing mm -hmm. that because, again, you shut out any and all uh, criticism. You, know I mean? you don't want to hear James Lindsay doesn't want to hear it. He doesn't you know, want he, to hear he, it. he refuses to hear it. Yeah. He refuses to hear it. So he only listens to the people who tells him he's right. And so as a result, the people encouraging the dumb things that he says, he just gets dumber. He only listens to people who encourages his dumbest insights, his dumbest thoughts, his, his incomprehensible way of speaking. He only listens to them. And so he gets dumber and dumber and more incomprehensible as a result to the point he's a parody of people's worst. He becomes a living parody of people's worst uh, interpretations of him. You know what I yeah. mean? He, 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 he essentially he's he's lost any credit credibility he long since could have had, you know what I mean, to become that way. And I see this everywhere, again, from the woke people to the anti woke to the anti anti woke, you become living parodies of the very of the very things you say you uh you criticize or the very people's worst interpretations of you and that, that's how we yeah. get here like for me so, oh keep going no no go ahead i was I, gonna I, say like I, I don't mean to toot my own horn here i know but i'm the one thing to prevent that from happening is kind of the, the fine line from uh 
uh, humility and self doubt. I know that mm-hmm. I can be wrong, but I'm also, you know, not so, I don't doubt myself so much so that I don't speak at all. You know what I mean? Because you get to a point if you, if you doubt anything you, and everything, the, the, the uh, substance of what you have to say, you just end up not talking because you lack the confidence in what you have to say. But no, I'm confident in what I have to say, but I'm also humble enough to know what to admit when I'm wrong and correct myself and go from there. I'm not interested in a feedback loop. I don't want people fucking singing my praises and never telling me and just telling me, yeah, you're right. You're also right. No, I, I, I appreciate it. I'm flattered. But I also want to hear my critics. Maybe I'm right. wrong. You know what I mean? But that requires a kind of kind of abandoning your ego to prevent yourself from sinking into the James Lindsay effect. You kind of have to abandon your ego for that to happen. Right. And there's, it's interesting to think of, so I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about sort of uh, exemplars of, of, of unreason on, in all these camps. So, I mean, a sort of, to me, like a standard example of someone who, really is not thinking for herself and sort of just become like an like a like an ideologically programmed bot who just yeah. like has the th- I'm thinking of can Robin only speak, yeah can only speak in talking points and you clearly have not understand the depth of what you're saying anymore and you're right. just you you have, like I said you have become just basically a, a a bot that just regurgitates talking points that you clearly have not right. given any real thought about anymore too. And so, so i so the example I, ha- I think is Robin D'Angelo, right? And you see, mm-hmm. you see a bunch of sort of anti woke, like, a, like parody accounts popping up and mm-hmm. gaining a lot of steam, right? A lot of people are following, like, you know, the Titiana or t- uh, t- Titiana McGrath, I think her name is on Twitter, is just like a parody account of yeah. the woke, right? And so, she, but really, it's like a parody account of someone like on the level of like Robin D'Angelo, yeah. where it's clear she's not thinking for. To me, it's clear Robin D'Angelo is not thinking for herself. Um, mm-hmm. She, I mean, she says like when she gets criticisms, she will like always defer to like the lived experience of Black people, right? Not acknowledging any diversity among Black people, sort of like mm-hmm. presuming that everyone just has the same opinion on these things, and she won't debate people like like that's like because because she thinks that you know this would be just like sort of further contributing to um to white supremacy or to white fragility whatever it might be so that is to me a clear example of someone who just like defers 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 and then Mm -hmm. at the other extreme you have someone like james Lindsay who will not defer to anyone because he's Mm -hmm. so convinced he's so convinced that his analysis is the only the correct right, analysis. The only correct analysis at all. Right. And and even though like a lot of his analysis is just sort of regurgitations <laughs> of previous criticisms of this sort of stuff from um, conservative people criticizing like all oh, the radical leftists on university campuses that you have a history of going back to bas- basically like the past 60 years, you can find examples of this over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. And it's the same kind of talking points. So you have James Lindsay on the other side. And now I'm trying to think of like the, the anti-woke, um, the anti-anti-woke. but I feel like the anti-anti-woke, right? But I don't, I can't think of off the top of my head, anyone who's, who's that reactionary and that sort of like programmed and um predictable yeah i don't i don't know anyone at the top of my head i can think of because that, that's more that's an even more niche subset of this whole fucking right. bullshit but they're there we've seen them it's just i can't think of a prominent one of the example off the top of my head at the moment but yeah if we had to struggle with both mm-hmm. streams of someone too so woke that they refuse to engage with anybody because they defer to the people while still continuing to say the dumb shit that they're saying and then the anti-woke who's so convinced that his his assessment is the only correct one that he will not listen to anyone else. He just mm-hmm. won't have it. You know what I mean? Right. It, it, that's just... These are people who, who again, they ref, they just refuse to let... The, the, it's their, again, it's their ego. Their whole identity is tied to this, to this fucking ideal that they've clung to and so they just refuse to let go enough to change. Yeah. It's sort of again, too late. 
It's too late. They're they're so sunk into it. And that's another thing is sunk cost is another big reason why so many people get stuck like this is because they've invested so much of themselves into these identities or in our ideals that to backtrack now would undo everything that they've built their yeah. entire personal and professional relationships on. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? The foundation of their uh, of the way they live their lives up to this point was dedicated to this, and they're just not going to stop. Even if it could progressively makes their life worse, they're not going to stop. Right. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. I'm curious, what what are your experiences navigating, you know, these these different circles? Like what, what sort of run in notable run ins have you had with the woke, the anti woke um, and it, characters like Lindsay? With the woke, starting with them, um, they yeah, they frustrate the living shit out of me. I have said I have uh, if, you, if you've ever seen any of my tweets straight up calling these motherfuckers out because I've effectively called them you are fucking drama obsessed uh, jackals always looking for someone to cancel always looking you you and then you venerate people obviously responding negatively to the to your fucking uh, exclusionary self righteous bullshit like I there's no one specific I would call I would say to call out but I call out that in the broadest sense every time I see damn every time I see it because that's what that is I'm like who do you think you're helping when you're coming after this motherfucker you think you're standing up for me when you're doing this you think you're standing up for black people you're advocating for us you're making us look good yeah you think you're helping us no you are satisfying your own sense of self-righteousness and uh, uh by champ by championing us our cause is defending us from someone who dared to be wrong on the internet you don't dare that they, they don't dare to make uh to understand that you know maybe the person wasn't wasn't uh, a malicious bad faith actor maybe they were just wrong and didn't know it yet maybe they were just ignorant maybe y'all should calm the fuck down and maybe just try to talk to them try to understand that you know maybe this person you could have reached them but because y'all jumped down their fucking throats and treated them like they were Hitler from the start, you've ruined any chance that person could have had to grow from being wrong. Mm -hmm. That's my experience with the woke, and I fucking hate that so much. I try to tell them, yeah. calm the fuck down. Real Jesus quick, because um, this is this is a, this is a point of contention I've seen a lot of a lot of people who are critical of the woke recently that the sort of term has become very vague and ambiguous and like who does it yeah. refer to what are the so how, how do you understand when you when you use the word woke like you know what sorts of things do you think that the woke crucially like all have in common uh if we're talking the woke in the derogatory sense that i think we've been referring to in the, right. up to this point probably yeah. then it would be a uh sense of self-righteousness that is very palpable it's fucking palpable of a kind of they a, a common trend among them is this this they swear it's like they can they can tell that they are that they, they think they're just so sure that they're fucking right about what they're doing and they usually when they do this thing they talk as if they're uh standing up for someone a common thing that the, the common trope from them is the thing they'll say uh i shouldn't have to educate you on this thing you uh -huh. do the research that's a common thing they'll say and I'm like, you self-righteous little shit. You do actually have to educate them on the uh, thing that you're talking about. Like, like you, unless uh, otherwise they're gonna end up on all the wrong, uh, getting all the wrong information. It's like they'll champion uh, black issues and whatnot. And when somebody honestly inquires on that, say, I remember I, I made a video on it and everything. It was a dude who's just like, so can you explain this thing about you know this particular black issue? And this person it was a white woman. It was like, oh. I shouldn't have to explain it. Like, I, I don't need to do the work for you. You go do it. Or, oh, a and it was a white check. woman? It was a white woman. Actually, it was a black <laughs> woman who's a prime example of that. And it's the very woman who wrote the 1619 Project. Uh, she, when someone mm -hmm. tried to add, really inquire on some shit that she was saying, and her, it was, yeah, I read it, it was a genuinely honest question. And her response was that same type of fucking self righteous i shouldn't have to educate you on this you do it you're like you, you i shouldn't have to do the work for right. you you do it i'm just like you're the one championing these these things right this is you're the one right. advocating for these things right so you should be ready to fucking answer people's questions 
on these things right then and there, or at the very least point them in the right direction. Mm-hmm. None of this fucking, oh, I shouldn't have to do. Like, yes, yes, you actually, you do have to. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. I can under, understand that response in some context, right? Like, yeah. like I imagine that, like, you know, you imagine being one of the only black people working at a specific company or something, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and then, like, George Floyd happens, and then, like, this massive, like, racial reckoning uh, culturally starts to happen. And then, you know, you're the one black person in the office, and the, your boss comes to you like, hey, would you, like, lead, like, an in, like a diversity information session type of thing? Or, like, yeah. a bunch of, like, people start reaching out to you like, what can I do, right? Like, like yeah. that would get super well, in, annoying. In that case, sure. I would say it's like, hey, I'm not, maybe not an, uh, an authority on this. Just because I'm black doesn't mean I know how to advocate for or speak on these issues. That's what I would say in that situation. Because, yeah, not everybody's a fun, not every black person is an activist. You know what I mean? So right. I would say in that in situations like that, it's just like, yeah, I understand why you want me to lead the charge on this. But again, I don't know enough to talk about these things. I'm not mm-hmm. an authority on these things. The problem is with people like her, the woman in question I'm referring to, is that she is by and large an authority on these things. Right. Or she, she positions does, herself as one. She positions right. herself as an authority on these things. She does actively advocate for these things. So that means she does have to answer when people question her on the things she's advocating for. That is her responsibility to do these things. So I say if you are going to, even if you're not an authority in like the, the a big name sense, if you are going to advocate for a, so, a, a issue of social justice, then you do have, that does mean you now do have to answer people's inquiries on those matters. You do. And if you don't know, just say you don't fucking know. Or and if you and if, and if you know someone better better suited to answering that specific thing, yeah. point them to that. But when you try that self right that that, that sense of that, that this weird uppityness, that condescension of I shouldn't have to explain this to you, you, you what you're telling me right there is again you you don't know enough about it yourself for one the, to advocate yeah. for, and two you you you, you dare to, to look down on somebody for not already being where you're at on this thing. It's not helpful to the cause, to anyone you purport to be trying to help or advocate for. You're not helping anybody by doing that. You know what I mean? In fact, if anything, you're only, if anything somebody will end up going to the opposite side out of spite towards you, which I've yes. seen, by the way. Yes. You know what I mean? So it's, it's yeah. like maybe be a bit more patient, understanding, welcoming, and but if you're, if you're in, uh, like advocating for these things yourself and if you're it, because it'd be again be be ready to answer these questions but if you if you're not ready to answer these questions on these things maybe don't fucking advocate for them sit down mm-hmm. don't fucking start championing and talking to this and all that because you're not helping when you do shit like that and i see right. so many of them do this i'm like you're not helping anybody you're making this worse you're making the discourse more toxic and poisonous and repellent and these in these causes more uh, unappealing to people who otherwise probably would have fucking supported us. Yeah. That's yeah, my yeah. issue with the woke. Now the anti-woke. <laughs> oh, these fucking guys. These well, guys not- some people, right, seeing your your interactions with the woke might conclude that that you I'm are a- among the anti-woke, right? <laughs> no, no, no. Not at all. Uh, that, and it's like they 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 come to that conclusion. I'm like y'all need to back, back the fuck up because I ain't your friends either. Like here here's mm-hmm. his wokeness as it's actually defined is literally just being aware of uh, societal injustices. Mm-hmm. It's, it's partic- that's literally the definition, and then it says states like particularly in the issue of racism. You know what I mean? That's it. That is all it means to be woke is to be aware of societal injustice and that can be interpreted as uh, all depending on who you're talking to because like for example a white nationalist definitely has a very different interpretation of societal injustice compared to me exactly you know what i mean so everybody's woke at this point to some degree Mm -hmm. you know what i mean and define so, that in their own terms everybody and define yeah. that in exactly define it in their own terms as to what they deem to be uh in uh a societal injustice, you know what I mean? So I try to explain that to anti-woke, the more anti-woke TM, you know, so the, the brand type people. Right, right, right. And the they, Quillette and all yeah. those folks, yeah. But the thing about them is they're, whereas the woke are self-righteous, the anti-woke are pretentious, are, I swear to, I swear to God, they are the dumbest, most pretentious little assholes <laughs> I've ever met. 
Now, they, these people, they, they, now they're very proud of their ignorance. They just, just, it's insane to me how proud, how, how certain they are that their assessment is correct. Because whereas the woke will just be like, ah, you know, I don't have to, I don't have to, I shouldn't have to explain this to you. The anti-woke are so certain that they're absolute, that their assessment yeah. is absolutely correct. They're they eager to explain it to you. They're, yeah. they're, they are eager to explain it, but they're wrong, but they're proud to be wrong. And if you right, don't- Because they're so convinced they're right. They're so convinced they're right that they're straight up fucking pretentious about it. And it's, you know, I'm just like, guys, you're, like that's why, I, again, Quillette and IDW and all them, they are so convinced of their own bullshit. So convinced. Yeah, they are eager, always ready and willing to explain why they think they're right. And But I'm like, you guys, but they will never admit they're wrong, ever. They will never see ground. They will never fold. And that's how they find themselves in increasingly more nutty conspiratorial circles where some of them are like, whoa, wait, what? Because when you get to the point like this pandemic as a prime example, you've seen, uh, or mm -hmm. not even this pandemic, the election results. The election oh my results God. Has, definitely, has definitely uh yeah. drawn the line between the ones who are like, what the fuck? What is wrong with y'all? Like, it's yeah. not... Like, where, where is all this conspiratorial nonsense? You know, like yeah. Jesse Singal or fucking Sam Harris are looking at the, at the at Brett Weinstein and all this other fucking cabal of anti yeah. people that they surrounded themselves with. And they're surprised and confused. Like, what is wrong with right. that? Right. And it's in their been, own fan base now, too. Like, their, their own, own fans base. are they're turning against they're, them. Yeah. Their own base are turning against them. And I'm like, well, that's the crowd y'all cultivated. You cultivated a very uh, a proudly ignorant base of people so now they believe this thing and they refuse to accept that they're wrong about it. And you and your one moment of fucking uh, critical thinking are like, no, this is wrong. Now their own base is against them. Yeah. And especially, especially telling people like you mentioned, Sam Harris, because you can trace this sort of split in Sam Harris's fan base throughout his whole career, right? Because mm -hmm. he'll, he'll, he'll always go for a certain framing of some controversial issue that is going to appeal largely to people on the yeah, far okay. right side of the political yeah. spectrum who just want to criticize the left. Right. And he'll do it sometimes under some guise of intellectual uh, authority rigor. Right. And yeah. And, and that he's, he's the only one thinking critically about this issue on the left, but he won't, he won't pull any punches in, in, you know, for instance, his comments on Islam and how Islam is like, you know, the threat to civilization. And it's like, you know, all these like millions of Muslims around the world want to like yep. fucking kill every American or something like, like he will just stay, say stuff that un oh, yeah, I, re I remember all that. Yeah. And so, 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 and then you wonder why, you know, half of his fan base is sort of like far right people who are only in it to listen to him criticize uh, yeah. what he sees as the excesses of the left. Yeah. So, and, and you end up with this, and then a lot of content creators have tried to say that they're not responsible for the audience, but I'm like, actually, yes, you are. You are responsible for the mm -hmm. audience you cultivate, and the thing, what you put out there is what will attract, will attract certain people. And you're being right. Sam Harris's anti Muslim screeds. For the, his years of doing that, attracted people who were that kind of unhinged and have irrational hatred of Muslims. So, of course, if the, and the one thing I've learned is where, where people are willing to believe one irrational thing, they're willing to believe a hundred other irrational fucking things. Mm -hmm. So, right. if, as long if, as if they, you have, yeah. yeah. So, as long you, as they they convince them of their own, you know, pre bias that, that there are inclined belief, yeah, yeah. So you, you confirm their bias up to this point. So if you stop and break away from all that uh, for even one moment, one moment of clarity, a critical thing, and I'm like, hold on, this isn't right. Your unhinged base of people you've cultivated up to this point, they're gonna turn on you. They're like, they mm -hmm. you you didn't inspire, you didn't build an audience of critical thinkers. You built an audience of unhinged loons who wanted their kind their their biases towards Muslims or feminists or uh, Black Lives Matter or what have you to be confirmed. Mm -hmm. 
uh, that that's what you've got now. And I'd have turned it against you because you dared to stop for a moment and realize maybe this thing is wrong. But that's not, again, that's not the audience you cultivated. You don't want an audience of critical thinkers. You didn't, at least he, I don't think it's not so much you didn't want that. You weren't, wasn't aware of that because he was so convinced that he's right that he couldn't think for yeah. a second that he might be wrong. And so he mm -hmm. attracted an audience of people who are also like that, who are so convinced of their rightness that they don't stop to think that maybe they're wrong. Right. And and I see it, the, the tough part about this is like, even the the people who are more fair-minded get corrupted by this like this sort of pervasive it's sort of uh this it's like this mood among the um, among the anti-woke like for instance when when i wrote the book and when i was working on my criticisms and writing some like twitter threads just like detailing some of the bullshit of new discourses james Lindsay's blog and other posts that get made on there and I was, um, I would frequently come up against a comment that, you know, oh yeah, James Lindsay, there's no hope for him. But, uh, you know, Helen Pluckrose, you know, Helen's better. She, she's she's yeah. more fair-minded. She'll engage with her critics. Um, and, you know, it from, from my observation, it seems to be that that's true, that she's more willing to engage critics than Lindsay. You know, Lindsay is, is his level of engagement is zero. zero. It's negative. Zero. It is, 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 is on the other side of the scale. But, uh, but, but Helen, like she will engage with some critics, but it seems to me that when she gets like pressed up against a corner in some debate and like, it's clear that she is on the wrong, on the wrong side of some point And she, she, she then will start to like, sort of utilize allegations of like bad faith and like, oh, you're being sarcastic. Uh, this clearly like isn't good faith um, mm -hmm. to the point where she will do the same sorts of things and just sort of just sort of mask it in a, in a layer of intellectual respectability. And yeah. that's that's something I've been thinking about a lot is like because I do think deep down that that Helen cares more about uh, civility and debate and, you know, in her like intellectual integrity yeah. than intellectual integrity i don't know so much actually but but I, at least i think she like on some level she sees herself as you know a, a good faith participant and and yeah. a serious um person who's who who wants to have good dialogue and now the question is like okay how much more of just being associated with james Lindsay will she be able to tolerate like exactly like because you everything that she stands for goes against yeah. what his whole persona yeah, so you end up having to make a choice. It's either your continued association with them will start, uh, again, the feedback loop into your worst behaviors, or you break associated with them, stick to your principles, and you don't end up becoming like James Lindsay, because that's inevitably what's going to happen, because that's what happened to almost all of them. Every one of these people, from James Lindsay, Sam, was, again, Sam Harris broke away, thankfully. He still, like, I still don't agree with him on a whole lot of things. Yeah. By and large, he broke away. But he, from, he made a stand, at least. He yeah. made a stand, you know what I mean? But you look at Brett Weinstein, Eric and Brett Weinstein, you know what I those mean? Those guys, man. Those fucking guys, you know what I mean? It's so from Dave Rubin. All of them have become Dave parodies. Rubin. Yeah. Of because of, by and large, all of them have become parodies due to that feedback loop of, in, of encouraging their worst fucking behaviors. You know what I mean? To masking mm -hmm. their fragile fucking egos in an inter, in, a, in a veneer of you know intellectualism, because yeah. but that's when really you guys are just thin-skinned man children who refuse to <laughs> admit that you're wrong ever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas, you, and if you just stop, stop for one second to think, maybe, maybe I might be wrong. Like, put your fucking egos aside. You wouldn't end up like James Inland Lindsay or Dave Rubin, where now, like, Dave Rubin is a fucking joke, even among his own circle now. You yeah. know what I mean? Because that's how, because he's become such a parody, so ridiculous and pathetic about it. That he, again, he's mocked by his own people now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, for, so, for Dave Rubin, it's like a particular, a particular, like, just a really good, um, a really good display of the problem. And it's, it's clear as day you can see what happened like if you if you track his progression he's never been an intellectual right that was never yeah. his skill set and the one thing that his fans will still to this day get behind is like well he was a good interviewer right 
That is not true. That is not at no, all God, true. No. He, he's not a good interviewer. He, he, he asks incredibly leading questions and he can only host conversations that revolve around one topic. Now, everything's so crazy now with this cancel culture. Yeah. And you can't even, you know, I just want to talk about ideas, right? We, this is the only place where we can talk about ideas. And it'll just all be anti-left shit all the time, over and over and over again. This, whatever his guest is, and if his guest says anything that pushes back against his core, like far right audience, yeah. then then the like to dislike ratio will be all out of whack and he will whack. respond going going forward and he'll say you know what like i listened to your guys suggestions like he he just follows his because he, he, he built a huge platform he built yeah. a huge platform and he just follows what what they he, he doesn't think for himself whatsoever no. and so so given the, the fact want, that his, the audience wants the audience gets exactly, the audience wants he does not the audience, think for himself ever has been drifting further and further to the right. So it's no wonder you get this election bullshit. Yep. You get this you and that is the coronavirus shit. Them. Honestly, that's yeah. the case for all of them, from Dave Rubin uh, to Tim Pool to- uh, Oh, man. You know, to, from Dave Rubin, Tim Pool. Sam Harris, again, somehow managed to break away um, against despite still having all those horrible views. Like Majid Nawaz, um, they said, um, Kathy Young broke away despite being immensely charitable to these fucking guys for years. Yeah, uh, Kathy Young is like pretty, 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 pretty solid. And everything I've seen from her is like that she's yeah. always maintained a pretty independent yeah. stance. Yeah. Even though, as, even though I would argue she's been wrong more often than not because you're falling for these guys' bullshit time and time again. Uh, yeah, she again broke away, but. By and large, all of them they stop thinking for themselves and they just regurgitate would it be in more increasingly incomprehensible ways what their audience wants. They become the further right their audience becomes, the further right they become, and right. thus they become less and less comprehensible and they become stupid. But they some of them still try to sound uh with their pretentious, <laughs> smarmy intellectual words like again, like Brett Weinstein. The Weinsteins especially try to make them. Oh man, stupid. Eric Weinstein's yeah, fucking they, neologisms, dude. They oh my god, they <laughs> they swear they're enlightened, but them like, but no. When you cut, when you dig through it, y'all are dumb as dog shit because y'all stopped thinking a long time ago. You stopped dude, thinking yeah. for yourselves a long time ago. All of you stopped thinking a long time ago. Have you have you heard um the the podcast uh decoding the gurus? It's a no, new podcast. Oh man, it's fantastic. It's link it's, me I, I got DMs, please. Yeah, I got. I mean, I gotta plug that one time. Uh, my friends Chris Cavanaugh and Matt Brown. Um, I'm two academics. I'm trying to have Chris Cavanaugh on the show. I, I'm yeah. trying to get him. He's just been busy, but I'm trying to get him. Right. So 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 if you get him. Dude, talk to him about the Weinsteins. Like, yeah. God damn. So, so they started this podcast, and it's essentially they go into a new guru every week. Yeah. Um, or not every week. Uh, every two weeks, whenever, yeah. as much time as they get. But they've, they've done James Lindsay. They've done the Weinstein brothers. They've done um, uh, Scott, what's his name? Scott Adams, that, that fucking crazy uh dilbert comics guy oh yeah um, he'd, have he'd have lost his mind he, he's lost his mind so they've done them and then they've also like made it clear that they don't want to just do people that they think they don't want to only use the term guru in a pejorative sense so they're also doing people whose sort of fans treat them like gurus even if they yeah. really are going to agree with everything almost everything they say so like they did a contrapoints one in the last episode and that was the first one where they actually had like a, a a positive assessment but yeah so they'll just go into like one episode or one piece of content that these people put out and especially oh and like jordan peterson right so like when jordan peterson talks he'll go and make everything sound so academic and uh, listening to yeah. it on the surface it might sound convincing it might all sound reasonable and he'll go he'll blow by certain points um that are very contentious but he'll just sort of like get past them so quickly that by the time that you're critically thinking about them and trying to assess whether they have any intellectual merit you've already lost it and he's on to something else so what yeah. they do is they break it down very slowly into bits and pieces and they assess the quality of their arguments um for 
listeners. And so like, I had no idea how actually bad shit the Weinstein brothers were until yeah. like these, these guys I, came in and decoded it. It was, it was incredible. I, I definitely learned to f- I figured that out a, a, a long while back. I started and again. And the thing is, I figured this out, not from paying attention from the, to those guys, but to paying attention to people on the left. Mm-hmm. When it came to this, I started noticing something. On the surface level, what they're saying sounds smart. Some of them, even on the, again, at the surface level, substance-wise, are even correct. But then I realized something. Were they sm- were they as smart and insightful as I thought they were, or was what they were saying just so unobjectively true, un- unobjectionably true, that it makes them sound smart for pointing it out? Because mm-hmm. I have noticed something with a lot of the people, the advocates were the same, was by and large the same things. They start saying really dumb shit. They starting could like when you start going outside of the thing that they were right about. Again, the surface level shit that they're right about. The second you start to dig in more, they don't actually understand much of what they're saying. Or worse yet, if they when they go outside of the thing that they is kind of their thing, like say healthcare or whatever, they're dumb as dog shit. And it clicked in my brain. I was like, because I'm like, and here's the thing: is it made me suffer from a bit of imposter syndrome because like I said I've seen this on right, left, all this jazz. I'm like, I'm not the smartest guy in the world. All I have is a fucking is an associate's in arts, a general studies. Yeah, you know, I got from uh, an online university while I was on active duty. You know what I mean? And it just made me so I'm like this. I'm not that smart, but I'm like, the second I started like really thinking about what they're saying, because I used to be swayed by all that too. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I met a care for all, and all that jazz, and then I started like really thinking about it. And then also paying attention to what they were saying about what needs to be about the about thing. And I noticed that they always spoke in very vague terms. Mm-hmm. Terms that sound again said sounded good, sounded insightful, but I'd always be like, okay, and what's next? And then what? What more? Like, come on, like take this to its logical conclusion, right? Like, what are you what are you what are you saying? And they really had, and they had nothing. It was just the the words. It was just, it, it was just empty. They felt. Yeah. I realized that you guys had them. Like y'all haven't really thought this out. You're just you're just talking. Yes, I get it. The establishment is corrupt. I get that. Okay. And next, what what do we do? What's can you lay out a plan? They never could. And I was mm-hmm. like, y'all haven't actually thought, you're just pointing out, I mean, the very obvious fact that a lot of our government is corrupt for, for some reason or another, but that's it. They're, they're yeah. one-trick ponies. That's his, that's, that is the extent of the depth of their depth of understanding of society, culture, and how we got here, and what do we do going forward. Yeah. That is the extent. Y'all, they, y'all haven't thought any deeper than that. And what, I mean, what that reveals is, you said, you know, you, you weren't the smartest guy. You only have an associates, but as you know, you know, I'm sure, you know, on a, on a, on a deep level is that intelligence is not about whatever degree you end up with. A, a lot of the times, all you can gather from somebody having a more advanced degree is that they have more advanced terms to cloak their same level of intelligence in, you know, going to university yeah. doesn't make you smarter. No. What makes you smarter is, is engaging with, viewpoints that you haven't yet engaged with seeing the the pros and cons to different positions and thinking critically and being open to changing your mind about things like yeah. that, that, that and, and engaging with people you disagree with i think is how yeah. you is you know that's how you spar intellectually yeah. and so if you have experience with that that's how you're going to grow in terms of your intelligence it's, it's not at all about anything to do with what degrees you have necessarily. I mean, yeah. for some things you definitely are, you know, I don't want a doctor who hasn't gone to medical school, but yeah. when it comes to, you know, understanding political problems and yeah. and how we ought to approach just social problems generally, like, nah, a, a degree is not gonna do a whole lot for you. Yeah, honestly, no, because these things aren't measured by, in the same way, by like a doctor a saving, um, like I said, you don't want a, do- a, a doctor who doesn't have a degree. 
You know what I mean? You can measure the worth of the doctor, babe, by uh, you can quantify their skill set. You know what I mean? How many people mm-hmm. have they saved? How how well off are the people as a result of their uh, of their skill as a doctor or a surgeon or what have you? Whereas things like this is a lot more abstract comparatively. Mm-hmm. And it only materializes in ways that are, by and large, really hard to quantify. Uh, right. And as a result, yeah, a degree isn't a measure of, isn't a good way to measure how well someone actually understands and assesses uh, society and culture. You know what I mean? It's just like you said, it going go, the, the degree is going to university and whatnot. It just gives you more words to cloak. The, the, the fact that your, your intelligence hasn't actually changed. You haven't actually gained a better understanding and insight on society and culture and people. Right. So, and so some programs will actually get you to do the intellectual sparring that you need. But others, I mean, a lot of universities, it seems to me, are sort of, or a lot of people go to universities with the expectation that it's a sort of pay to play game in yeah. which you pay the tuition, you get the degree, and then the degree is supposed to sort of set you up for life somehow. And you, the fact that everyone is doing it now sort of negates the whole process and undermines the, the whole purpose for a lot of these people. And it's sad to see people going to university just to get a degree because university has like incredible potential to be like the place where you can change your life and transform your whole outlook on the world and for a lot of people it's really just a means to an end and when the end is just a piece of paper and that, and that's it really but hey we are at an hour actually over um so if, if y'all haven't had any questions yet now i i, I should have said it fucking 10 minutes ago you know <laughs> sorry, sorry, i mean I, I got i got time if people have questions yeah well i mean the next person on the show is in the audience it's elrond oh wow What's up, yeah. Elron? Yeah, he's coming on next. But uh, yeah, no, if you got questions, now's the time to ask them of Sam here. Because this has been a good conversation, brother. For real. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate it, man. Hey, uh, what's up? Yeah, if you, if, if you ever want me to come back on, I'm happy to come back on. Hey, you're welcome anytime you feel like it. I do this every Sunday, all day. Though I really That's need to actually dude. schedule a break. I really do need to actually. Yeah, you, yeah you do need a break. That was my bad. I really wanted to talk to all of you. And uh, that was not smart of me. I should have fucking. <laughs> I will get that fixed next time for next Sunday. I swear I will get it right because I do need breaks. Yes. But, I will be uh, reminding you when I when yes. I send you the decoding the gurus link. Yeah. I'm like, dude, make sure you schedule a break at least an hour. <laughs> Fuck. I really should have done that. But I will say my closing statements now while anyone's getting questions written up if they have any. Uh, thank you all for coming. Again, I'm doing this all day. I have another show at 5.30. And again, this goal, this is going to go all the way to 11 o'clock tonight. 11, a, 11 p.m. EST. 11 o'clock. I know. I know. It's fucking. I, again, I should have scheduled a break. I'm an idiot. And my Man. body is going to hate me by the end of this. But once again, I am doing this to fundraise for my local uh, uh, Habitat for Humanities Neighborhood Revitalization Committee. Find links in the description below. If you're going to donate, make sure you donate with um, uh, when you, you notate that it is for the uh, Neighborhood Revitalization Committee or the NR Committee, or just say it's for Rico and they, Rico and they'll understand. Or if you can't donate through there, I have my PayPal link in the description below. Send me the money. I donate it for you. Send your receipt to let you know that, that I, I donated your money as intended. So with that being said, Sam, do you have any closing statements for the audience? Nothing, nothing particular. Uh, pe- g- people watching this show will know, you know, think for yourself. Don't don't believe all the shit you see out there on the Internet and uh, stay tuned for hopefully some uh, some good announcements from me in terms of a project that I'm working on and might be able to talk about soon that I can't just talk about just yet. Um, but it should be exciting. So stay tuned. Follow me on Twitter. Um, yeah, that's all. All right. And since there ain't no questions popped up yet, I'm going to go ahead and end this live stream. Uh, don't leave. Don't go anywhere. Uh, <laughs> and I will see y'all in the next.